200 to 250 years ago, Scottish grocers used to blend the teas they sold to their customers. You know, sometimes the parcel would come in and it was too bitter. Sometimes the tea parcel would come in and it'd be too light. So they would blend the teas to match what their customers wanted for their morning tea or their afternoon tea. They then took that nose and palate skill set and started blending the whiskeys they were selling to their customers. If you can imagine, in the late 1700s, early 1800s, there wasn't the same quality control in whiskey and tea that there is today. So again, some whiskeys would come in too strong, too smoky, not smoky enough, not fruity enough, and they would blend the whiskeys to make them more palatable and more approachable for their customers. John Walker was one of these grocers. Um, he started his own grocery store in 1820 when he was 14 years old. His dad had died and he got uh, the family farm, he sold it, got into the grocery business. He started blending whiskeys by the time he turned 20. And that's where John Walker sort of leaves the story and his son and his grandkids come in. John died in 1857 and his business went to his son Alexander. Alexander in 1865 named John's most popular blend Old Highland Blend. He also helped introduce the flat-sided bottle and the tilted label that the company still uses today. Alexander died in 1889, and the business went to his sons, Alexander II and George. In 1893, they bought Cardew Distillery to help them with the supply for their blends. And in 1909, they renamed three of the Old Highland Blends after the colors of their labels. There was a six-year-old white label, a 10-year-old red label, and a 12-year-old black label. The white label uh, version didn't last very long, and soon after that, uh, red label lost its age statement. In 1925, the company John Walker & Sons joined Distillers Company Limited. And by the 1950s, it became the best-selling scotch in the world, and has remained so ever since. I often talk about the liquid volume and alcohol volume measurements as a way to ascertain a whiskey's bottling date. Today, I'm just gonna talk about this bottle's label and its tax stamp. 1967 print ads for Johnny Walker Red Label place the proof in the middle of the bottom part of the label and show Canada Dry as the importer. 1967 marks the last year that this style of label showed up. After that, print ads show Somerset importers as the importer, and the proof is in the bottom left. My bottle has the proof on the bottom left, and Somerset importers is the importer. So I'll say 1968 is the earliest this whiskey was bottled. In 1977, the words U.S. Internal Revenue were swapped for Bureau of ATF on liquor tax stamps. So I'll go with 1976 as the latest this whiskey was bottled. That gives us a range of 1968 to 1976. So this Johnny Walker Red Label with its nice fill level and its fantastic screw top, so no broken cork bits floating around. Let's open it up. Well, that one's breathing a little bit. I am going to pour its sparring partner. It's a sample of Johnny Walker Red Label that was bottled somewhere between 1983 and 1985. First up, the Dusty or Dusty. Okay, ready? Here we go. Steel wool, whole wheat bread, earthy peat, raspberry candy, cherry syrup, beef broth, after some time, it gets rye bread and uh, black licorice. Okay, now I'm gonna nose the other one. Lots of ocean and saline notes. Probably a little bit of guava and papaya going on too. Toasted grains, toasted nuts, toasted oak. Yeah, the nuttiness actually grows with time. I'm starting to get hazelnuts now. A little bit of baking spice too. With time, the nose picks up notes of plaster and dried cheese, maybe a little bit of toffee and lemons and honey. I can't wait to drink this now. So let's get to the drinking part. Johnny Walker Red Label from the Vietnam years. Slaunch. Perhaps you've noticed in previous episodes, if I'm closing my eyes and making yummy noises, I like the whiskey. 
Hmm. Sometimes I even stare off into the distance. It's very earthy, very mossy, but also has on the palate what that had on the nose, this toastiness. It has a really nice herbal bitterness to it. The sweetness is very subtle and kind of fruity. Baked peaches, baked apples, baked pears. You can even picture a little bit of baking spice on top of the baked fruits. It all comes together as a very autumnal whiskey. The palate really does change in the glass over time because now there's more sweetness. It's almost more dessert-like with more fresh fruits to go with the baked fruits and some brown sugar with a nice long finish that, you know, holds on to some of the, the fun rougher edges as well as the sweet bright parts. I'm drinking this much too fast. Let's go to the other one. Iran Contra era Johnny Walker Red. Definitely related to the other one. It has a little bit of that steel wool in the palate. It has that earthiness. It has the heft to it. It is a, it is, it is a big whiskey, even though it is Johnny Walker Red Label. There's peat in here and some of the herbal bitterness that was in the other one. Perhaps there are fewer fruits and a little less sweetness, but in its place is this real bold industrial style. In my final sip here, there's now more fruit in the finish, like plums and nectarines. You may have noticed that I have not put these on the rocks. I even brought up my little rocks class, just in case. These drink like a single malt. These are big, beautiful whiskeys. They are complex, they are challenging, and they give you an idea of what our dads, some of our granddads, and what some of our great-granddads drank when they had Johnny Walker back in the day. Sounds like my time is up.